P-A-S-C-A-L You are now rocking with that dude Pascal We be going wild Haitian in the building So, so, so original Got the haters Got your feelings Get your hands up to the ceiling And keep them held high Cause only wishes are ready So get about it Goodbye Hold up, we just saying hi Five somebody rise up Weekdays Catch us live Somebody let's go Good evening Good morning, everybody, and good afternoon. Welcome to the Pascal Show. Hope you guys are all doing well out there. Hope your day is doing well. Hope the show finds you in good spirits and all of that good stuff. We got some things we got to talk about. There's been some new information, some information I talked about in a pop-up video, which we will be circling back to. But there's been new stuff added on top of this. And let me tell you. This is apparently a very, very dark individual. I'm just going to be real. I'm going to, I'm coming out the gate hot and fresh out the kitchen. Okay. Fresh out the gates. Guns are blazing. This is a very dangerous man. And now we're getting more and more information starting to come out. And it's pretty damn shocking. I'm just going to be real. Totally shocking. And this story that I'm going to give you guys in a little bit. Because we got to do a little bit of catch up, talk about what I've talked to you guys about in this pop up video, just a little recap and everything. But the main topic, as you see, this man went after somebody, somebody in his own family, to be exact. I got questions about this because, from what we're understanding, the charges were dropped, the case was dropped. I don't get it. I got questions. We're going to talk about it. We're going to get into that very, very soon. So do me a favor. You know the drill. If you don't, I'm going to tell you anyway. So don't worry. You're going to you're gonna find out real soon. Hit that like button down below. If you're watching on Facebook, make sure you hit that reaction button. That would be greatly appreciated. Please and thank you. And, of course, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you're watching on Facebook, hit that follow button crush it as i usually say make it scream out your name and all that stuff on both you know please crush it make it scream out your name if you're gonna hit that subscribe button too okay hit it so hard it cracks your 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 your, your screen but don't don't send me the bill okay please don't send me the bill all right i got a family to feed man but if you want to support the channel, by all means, hit that join button down below. If you're watching on YouTube, consider becoming a member of the family on my YouTube channel. That would be greatly appreciated. And, you know, it costs less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, y'all. I mean, dang. And I know some of y'all like it fancy at, at, at Starbucks. So it's even cheaper than that with your fancy bougetto ashes okay so consider becoming a, a a family member by hitting that join button down below okay anyway let's get it yeah i said bougetto okay i said bougetto dag nabbit put that in your uh, vernacular for the day and you're welcome but moving on we got to get into some serious stuff, y'all. As we have talked about before in the recent pop-up video, by all means, go and please check it out. There have been new information. There's new information that's been coming out about this monster, Craig. I mean, I'm going to show you his face. I mean, I know some of y'all like, please don't show me his face. I don't want to see it, but we got to show it anyway. I'm sorry. Horde 47. Like to come horde 47. So there he is in all of his glory. Okay. By the way, this man is claiming he has multiple sclerosis. And I'm still sitting here saying, I don't know if I believe that 100%. But then again, he could very well have it, you know, out of respect to all y'all that are fighting and, and battling with multiple sclerosis, I'd hate it if, uh, I'm sure you would hate it if you said something like that and you weren't believed. But at the same time, this dude is the mucky muck of the mucky muck. So it's hard to believe him actually having multiple scler sclerosis, especially after the information we have recently been seeing 
Okay. And like I said, I'm going to give you a little bit of a trip down memory lane. We already know. And of course, I'm trying not to show uh, her face on the show. So I'm not going to do that. But Charlotte Senna, she was nine years old. She was on a, a bike, uh, doing a bike ride around a camping site on Loop A in Moreau Lake State Park. She was there with family, family, friends, etc. She had done a loop or so biking with her friends and family. And then she said, hey, dad, I want to do one more. Or, you know, mom and dad, I want to do one more. I want to show you that I'm grown, you know. Parents said, okay, go on with your grown self. She jumped on the bike. She continued biking. And then she did not return. That mother lover that I just showed you allegedly walked up and took her. Just walked up and took her. And there's more information here that's really kind of creepy. Very strange and creepy. And I'm wondering what happened here. And we're going to look at those things because we got some videos. We got some news clips, you know, blah, blah, blah. We're going to look at a bunch of stuff. Trust and belief. All right. But after 20, the over 48 hours or almost 48 hours since the time she went missing, they were able to find her. Thank you, Jesus, right? I know a lot of y'all were like, oh, the, the Lord is good. God is good. And I know some of y'all would be like, all the time. But fantastic news. Very happy she was found alive in his camper in his mama's backyard. There's a lot of questions I have around this whole thing, which we are going to talk about. Because, you know, I've had time to sit on this and let this ruminate, marinate, and all that. And something just doesn't smell right. Now, we know in this situation, just talking about the space itself and where she was found. Hmm. How do I say this? He has multiple properties, babies. Yeah. Yeah. Three, if I'm correct. Three properties. He owns three properties. There was in the story that in the conversation that we had yesterday, we talked about this where it allegedly it was being said that uh, one of the one of his kids mentioned that he was trying to finish a driveway. They didn't finish it. And I know that there's been other YouTubers that have been over uh, checking out the, the driveway and showing 5-0, measuring the, the, the driveway and all that stuff. Okay. And you guys don't need to tell me that because I've already, y'all been told me that yesterday. I checked it out. Cool. Doesn't really mean anything. It just means that they're just doing their due diligence. It could mean something. It could mean nothing. We don't know. But there is a history of weirdness, a history of darkness from this man. And I'm using darkness because I can't really say the A word, you know, the taking or anything of that sort. But this is a very dangerous individual. But let's get back to the conversation that I was just saying, the topic at hand. He had three properties, tree of them. But he's living in the backyard of his mama's home. Really? For real? For real? He's living in the backyard of his mama's home for real. He's got three properties. Why? Why would he live in the backyard of his mama's crib? Think about it for a second. Doesn't that seem a bit odd to you? Now, it, sure, he probably is living in the backyard of his mama's crib. It's so weird to say that, but it could very well be what it is, okay? It could be very well what it is at face value, but it seems a bit like, could that just be a holding place? I said this in the pop-up video briefly. Please go check that out when you get some time. But I did also say, I did say in that briefly, could that be a holding place? Like a kid goes missing or a kid is taken. They're brought here in this holding place, this camper in the backyard of his mama's home. And then from there, that person who has been taken, that's when they go and they disappear. Like a holding place, a middle ground. Could he be a gate 
keeper for something else. Now, I know that's kind of getting into the tinfoil hat type of thing, uh, uh, a conspiracy theorist type of type of thing. And I'm not trying to go there, but I'm just asking the questions that I feel that we all are asking right now. In other words, you know, in layman's terms, sup with that, you know, sup with that. Okay. Now, one of the things, the reason why this has kind of been percolating in my mind tremendously lately, or, you know, since we've been covering this, this particular case is the story that I've showed you guys in this pop-up video, which we are going to talk about briefly. And it's this right here. Okay. There was a woman, a mother, a grandmother, I'm sorry, that claimed that her grandson was almost taken by this hulking six foot four, 275 pound man who allegedly at that time as well was battling multiple sclerosis as well. But he was able to go, hey, come on over. You want to you want to learn how to put wires on my weed whacker? Does that make sense? And then in this article, which I talk about in the pop up video, which I highly recommend you go check it out. He goes running back to his bike. Now, it says bike. I don't know if it means motorcycle, like he's a Harley guy, because he kind of looks like a Harley guy. You know, does he kind of look like a Harley dude? Drinking, drinking, you know, bush hard. Not bush lights, but bush hard. Doesn't he kind of look like that kind of guy? You know, get your motor running. You know what I'm saying? He looks like that kind of guy. So I don't know if he was going back to his bicycle or going back to a bike. All right. But it says it here. Don't worry. I'm going to show you guys. We're going to take a trip down memory lane. But take a look at the, but like I said, please go check out my previous video. Okay. But it doesn't make sense, KB. See, carrying a weed whacker on a bike. How does that work? And if he had a bike, it, regardless, he was either riding a bike like a motorcycle or a bicycle. And he has MS? What? Math ain't mathin'. I'm going to read it to you guys. Like I said, it don't make no sense, man. It don't make no sense. So let's take a look at this. All right? So this grandmother says, yeah, he came up and he was talking to her grandson and while that happened, her 10-year-old grandson, and while that happened, thank God, the dog started bike, uh, barking. The dog started barking and apparently barking cr like crazy. And then, boom, she ran back around and all that. Let, let's just take a look at the article. I'm not going to go deep into this, okay? I'm just tapping into it. I talk about it at great lengths on the pop-up video. So take some time to watch that video. But it says Carol Brown 61 uh said that Craig Ross tried to take her grandson Braden 10 years old when they were they were doing yard work outside of her home. So she was while in this particular moment she was she ran to the back of you, or she was walking to the back of her home to turn on the hose cuz I guess they were doing some yard work and then she hears the dog bark frantically. Okay? And, you know, she even describes that this guy was pretty tall. Her dog was uh, barking wildly. She went back uh, to the front yard to see what was going on. That's when she noticed Ross, who stands six foot four, tall, uh, six, four, six feet, four inches tall and weighs 275 pounds per his arrest record, towering over her 10 year old grandson. He was wearing Native American style earrings and feathers. And with feathers and hoops that looked like dream catchers, he said. Very weird. Okay. But, of course, she went over there. The dog was freaking out. She noticed that this man was basically just hovering over her 10-year-old grandson. Brian, uh, Brown has claimed that Ross tried to lure her grandson in by asking him to help him load string on his new weed whacker. I'm not joking. This is not a joke. 
When I said, you know, you want to help me put some string on my weed whacker? He literally was doing that, allegedly, from these reports. Okay? So, let's move on. He was putting things on the weed whacker or trying to get the son to come over, the, the grandson to come over. That's how he was trying to lure the kid. When she noticed the strange encounter and Ross realized she was watching them, he started backing up. Okay. Then he sprinted toward a bike. He left on the road. When she offered to get her husband, who, you know, thank God he was a retired police detective, to help him. Now, like, like I said, hold on. He sprinted towards the bike. So now, if you really think about it, the things that we were talking about the other day, and I'm going, wait a second, he's got MS. Maybe he won't be able to move as much, so on and so forth, blah, blah, blah. But he was able to sprint to a bike. And she didn't, it doesn't say, I would love to get this remedied. Is it a bicycle or a motorcycle? Okay. We, I talked about this in the pop-up video, but he ran over. He sprinted towards the bike. He left the road when she offered to get her husband. He says, oh, no, 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 I'm okay, according to Brown. She has recounted, recounted this to the police, okay, the same story. When police showed me this picture, I would have fell down if I wasn't already sitting. This is what she said. My grandson freaked out when he saw that I showed when I showed him the picture of the man that we saw back in July, she said, adding that I recognized him immediately, 100 percent immediately. I said, that's him. She added for weeks later, I was creeped out. We both were. We lived here for 30 years and never, I've never seen anything like that. In hindsight, I believe if I hadn't run around the house when I heard the dog freaking out, my grandson would be gone. On a bike or on a bicycle, uh, on a motorcycle? That's one thing I'm still trying to figure out, okay? Adventures Inward just said uh, Pascal was a bike. And if that's entirely true, my Lord, mind you, this is a man that is claiming to have MS. I repeat, this is a man claiming to have MS. He could be lying. He could have worked completely alone. But then again, he could have worked with somebody else on this particular time. Anything's possible. That's just one incident. There's more. There's more. That's just one incident. Now, I, of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up some video because uh, I want to share you with you guys some things. But this guy, I mean, you know, clearly, this ain't his first rodeo of doing this kinds of this these kinds of things. Okay, definitely not his first time. Um, and what's even more, they also say that disturbing about it which we are going to get here in, in, into here in just a, a little bit, is that police were, in, were involved or at least notified of his devilish behavior before and still nothing happened. And I'm wondering why. Don't worry, we're going to get into that. But I know I did this in the pop-up video, but there is a little bit in this video that we did not finish. I was saving it for this live. This is the grandmother speaking on behalf of this encounter, this almost devast almost really devastating encounter with this monster. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to play a little bit of this. Okay? Hit the number one. Let me know you guys can hear this. Let's rock and roll. Here's what she said. Take a listen. Yeah, I had one interaction, and it was very uncomfortable, and... Uh... I don't want to talk about it. Never in my wildest dreams did I think that anyone that I've ever seen or I just can't fathom an individual being capable of such a hideous thing. Now, let me tell you, uh, you know, clearly she ended up talking later on because that's why we got all that 
amazing, those amazing details. Um, and given the fact that this happened this summer, so this wasn't very long ago. This was not very long ago at all. And I, I kind of wish, and I'm, I am still wondering if the, this story was told to police in the summer, right when this situation happened, or if this was, this encounter did not uh, uh, get reported until this monster was caught. You see what I'm saying? Regardless, I'm not trying to put blame on uh, Miss, Miss, Mrs. Brown here at all. I'm not. All I'm saying is um, I'm just wondering if it was told before. Um, but I don't know if it, it was. And that is tragic because that was, let's be real, a very strange encounter of some random dude going up to the lawn talking about putting string on a weed whacker i mean it, it's just it's just weird y'all very very weird um but let's continue on again that neighbor not really wanting to go into details about what made that interaction so uncomfortable as she described it but really people who live on that street just in shock to learn the news that this little girl was kidnapped and was hiding in a trailer just steps away from their own homes. Ashley? What about um, the family? You know, I, I recall last night, Governor Kathy Hochul being very tight-lipped about the family, saying they will share if they want to. That gave me a chill up my spine, mm -hmm. given the fact that who knows why a grown man kidnaps a nine-year-old girl and holds her. Uh, but we all have our suspicions. What's the family saying? The family is staying pretty quiet for now. They are focusing their attention on Charlotte, rightfully so, and I think understandably so. But they did release a statement. They're not doing any on-camera interviews. Uh, but in their statement, they said, quote, we are thrilled that she is home and we understand that this is the outcome, or this outcome rather, is not what every family gets. A huge thank you to the FBI, the New York State Police, all of the agencies that were mobilized, all of the families, friends, and volunteers. Again, as of yesterday afternoon, there were 400 people on the ground searching for this little girl. Uh, late yesterday, we got the overwhelmingly good news that she was found alive. At last check, we heard that nine-year-old Charlotte was taken over to the hospital for medical evaluation, and that's where she was finally reunited with her mom and dad. L listen, uh, for me, um, it I kind of agree with with Miss Banfield here, um, when you hear how she was reacting to a specific statement, uh, it does say it does kind of make you go down the route of, oh, my God, could there have been more to this situation that they're not willing to put out yet? Uh, so on and so forth. But at the same time, I understand they have a right to their privacy. Uh, this is their own child. This is their kid. Um you know, they don't need to put all that information out there like that. They really, really don't. Um, so God only knows what actually happened. And at the end of the day, do we need to know what happened? I feel like everything is going to un unfold when he sees the inside of a courtroom. That's basically it, right? And what really matters is that this young, this young girl has been found and that she's home with her family. It's devastating that if anything worse happened to her, other than just being put into, a uh, 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 stowed like stashed away in a in a cabinet, uh, it's it's on it's, it's terrible to think that it could be something more or could be more than that. But I feel right now we should be happy and thankful that she's okay and that she's home and she's alive and breathing, right? Um, but. I feel that there's been a few things that kind of popped up, like the close encounter, the the, the close encounter <laughs> uh, uh, with that grandson, right? Um, and other things that have happened in the past that are now starting to sprout out. Like I said, there's more coming. There's more information coming. But now we're getting more information uh, we're getting some of the information, and it's pretty crazy the uh, the information that we're getting right now. But let me let me play the rest of this really quick. Let's take a listen to this. 
Rook, real quickly, about 20 seconds left. Uh, Craig Ross Jr., presumably in the building behind you. Um, inmates do not like people who do things to children. I don't know what <laughs> he did or if he did anything True. To, chill, to this child. I don't know if he's guilty or not. That will be for a jury to determine. But do we know anything about the way they have him incarcerated and where in that building? Right. So we know that he is in the Saratoga County Jail, the building right behind me. Uh, my team was talking with New York State troopers uh, earlier today, and one of the officers told us that they believe he is in isolation in the building behind me, so not in general population, at least for now. Uh, he was arraigned this morning. He's being held here without bond. Yep, that's exactly what I expected uh, you were going to say. Damn right. And let him be in there forever. OK, lock him up and throw away the doggone key, in my personal opinion. And I think we all agree with that. Um, there is something else I did want to point out as of yesterday, and it still hasn't changed. OK, when we talked about it yesterday, we're going to talk about it again here, too, because law enforcement, Sarasota, Saratoga, I'm sorry, uh, County Sheriff's Office is still looking we're still asking for footage. Again, they're they're asking for assistance from the general public. They're asking, "Hey, in this in this particular case, we are still looking for footage." Okay, between the hours of 6:15 and 7:15 p.m. on the 30th of September. And of course, they're saying, "Please contact Investigator Robinson at this particular web uh, at this particular email." And they're looking for a slew of footage from multiple streets and roads and routes, okay? Or routes, if you call it route or route, okay? And so they're still looking into this because it's not done yet. Their investigation is still, as they've been saying, ongoing. It ain't done yet, all right? And to me, that says something else as well. Like I said earlier, I could be crazy, I could be completely wrong, and that's fine. This could be some dude out of nowhere just really strapped for cash suddenly, and he just decides out of desperation, I'm going to do some taking. I'm going to do some Liam Neesom's, right? Why? And, he, and, he, and it seems like he's tried it other times before. Clearly, he tried it in, in July or this past summer. And, and now he did another one and did not work out. Clearly, he's in jail now. But it makes you wonder, is it just because of monies? Is it because he wasn't able to secure the bags? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. To me, it feels like there's somebody else involved. Again, I could be really wrong. But something just doesn't feel right. He has three properties of his own. We were we talked about this. We read it in in reports ye yesterday, last night. We talked about this, fam. Three, of course, me speculation land. I know speculation warning, but at the same time, it just doesn't make sense. Now I know that they are starting to investigate into the mama. They're doing their due diligence. They're investigating into the mama because let's be real. You're telling me mama wouldn't see, depending on, you know, her, how able she is, et cetera. I don't know how old the mom is and, and if she has any physical ailments and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, you know us, you know, all of our mamas be nosy and all of our, our mamas know that's weird mama sixth sense of things going down. So you're telling me that mama didn't know what was going on in her own backyard? Just saying. Again, she could have nothing to do with this. No connection whatsoever. But then again, she may. Just something to think about. Again, three properties that he owned. He was in a camper, in a van down by the river, living in his mama's backyard in a camper. Now, is that because of MS? 
Or was that the holding point for her next transition? Think about that for a second while I continue telling you guys your, the stories, your stories of the night. All right? Oh, speaking of which, left turn, I know, but I'm sorry. All y'all members, okay? All y'all who are family members, I appreciate y'all. I, I put a post, a members-only post in the community page. Please go check it out. Please comment. I'm working on something, and I need y'all's opinion and thoughts. So please go check it out. And if you're and if y'all are going, what what did what is he talking about? Then become a member and find out, baby. Dang. You know what I'm saying? That's all. Like I said, less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks. All right? And some of y'all bougie out here. You know? It's triple lattes, super skin skim milk with no fat but fat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if y'all can afford that, come on. Hit that join button down below. Support the channel. All right? All right. We got more. All right? So police are still asking for footage because the investigation is not done. Because I feel that they feel. I feel that they feel what I feel. Is that they think that there's somebody else involved. Or many other people involved. Possibilities. Okay. But there's more to this. Okay. Let's take a look at this article right here. And don't worry, we're going to be going into some more details about when she got uh, found, et cetera. We're going to be going into that too um, and all that. But this stuff I wanted to give you guys because I know some of y'all want that information right at the, the beginning of the show rather than way at the end. So I'm giving y'all what you need right now. Now, so the thing is, is that this is the this is an article that still blows my mind. And I, I got big problems with it, guys. Because in my, and here it is. I'm not trying to sit here and say that the that 5-0 is wrong or done anything bad. They did their due diligence. They did an amazing job. Hercules, Hercules, good job to 5-0 for finding that young girl. Thank you, baby Jesus, for doing what you did. Okay? But something's weird here. So Sh Charlotte Senna, her monster, okay, was in investigated for aing another person. Another, I can't even say that either. I can't say that. You know what I mean? So I got to use these code words. But another person last month. But cops closed the case when he denied it. What? Explain that. Explain that. Now, I know a lot of y'all are going to be sitting here going like, oh, you know, that, you know, don't go after the, the cops like that. I ain't going after no cops. I'm just saying that that don't make no sense. Somebody explain that to me. So he allegedly SA'd another person, another child, 12 years old to be exact relative, family member. He denies it and the case is closed. I'm curious as to why. Now, if he was a bad mother, shut your mouth. Why was this closed? Let's take a look at this. And of course, in the ransom, he was in the ransom note, he was asking for $50,000, all right? He was asking for, he asking for that too, okay. Now, is the monsters was investigated, was being investigated for allegedly SAing another person last month, but police closed that case when he denied it. Math ain't mathin'. According to the Times Union, now Times Union, I want to remind you, they said in an old, in an old, uh, older post, when she first was found, they said he was a registered mother lover. He was registered. That's what they said. And now they're saying that he's not. And maybe they got that confused because they knew about 
these allegations, but he wasn't put on the registry. Do you see what I'm saying? Because the, the case was closed. So maybe they knew that and they just kind of shot the, you know, got, a, got ahead of themselves with the situation. I don't know. But according to them, this is what they're claiming. All right. So another periodical is saying about this. They reported that uh, she, that Ross was reported to police earlier this year over claims of essaying a female re relative when she was 12. The alleged crime happened last year, but was only just reported from what they're saying last month. When questioned, he denied the allegations and the case was closed. It's unclear if that case will be reopened now uh, that he is in custody for taking Charlotte. Like I said, don't, it don't make no sense, y'all. It don't make no sense. You see what I'm saying? Don't worry, we're going to go through these photos and, you know, have a good old time, do some photo time and everything. But still, Sonia, I agree. I agree. Something, something doesn't smell right. Now, we already know about everything about this ride and whatnot, but that's it. This is all the information that we know of so far from this particular article. Let's get into this one, too. Let's take a look at this one as well. My mouse is on crack. Here it is. Details emerge about sketchy past of Charlotte Senna's alleged monster. All right. Two days after uh, cops burst into a camper to find nine-year-old Charlotte stuffed in, the, in a cupboard and allegedly found her monster wearing only his underwear. Oh, my Lord. He was in his skibbies, y'all. Oh, that's so disgusting. All right. New details have emerged about the sketchy past of Craig Nelson Ross. Ross, 46, was arrested in 2017 on, on accusations. He put his hands on someone in a domestic incident. That they were in NBC reported this, citing police records. Cops wrote that he quote unquote applied pressure on the on the victim. I'll just highlight this. Okay. During an altercation that ended in his arrest. So he was already a violent individual. And S dubs, I will pull up uh the information. If y'all don't believe me, I'll pull it up. We read it last night. Go check out. In fact, yeah, go check out the show last night. We read it. It was in black and white. He claims to have MS. We all know, for those of y'all who were there, I'm not crazy. It was written in black and white. Unless they changed it recently. I mean, shoot. There were stories about uh, uh, him being a, a mailman and all this crazy stuff. I mean, I don't know what's true about that part. But from when he was arrested, they said he had multiple sclerosis. Oh, God. Okay, so go check out yesterday's last night's live. Okay, so he was arrested for putting his hands on somebody. Okay, putting his hands on somebody. Moving on, no other details on the incident were revealed Wednesday. Prosecutors charged Ross with criminal obstruction of breathing or circulation, a misdemeanor offense in New York where the incident occurred. Records showed that Ross was released on his own recognizance after being arraigned at the Moreau Town Justice Court, less than four miles from Moreau State, uh, Lake State Park, the location where Ross is accused of taking Senna on Saturday as she rode her bike on a camping trip. He now faces a felony charge of first degree taking that unlike his last arrest has forced him to remain in custody without bail. Dag Nabbit, he should stay there until he is found guilty and they throw him into a more dangerous place. Okay. Whilst being incarcerated, I mean, okay. A dangerous place of incarceration. All right. Authorities said Wednesday that Ross hasn't been cooperative with investigators, refusing to divulge a motive for the alleged crime. So now he's just being a piece of trash. 
Okay? So now he's just being a piece of trash. Great. He's not even helping. He's not even fessing up and saying, doing the right thing and just fessing up. Yes, there was, there's the reason why I did this and blah, blah, blah. Uh, oh, oh, lest I forget. There's other people involved. That'd be kind of helpful, right? His name, I, I got Stan. His name is Cletus. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it may be. Whoever it may be, he should be saying, he should just be squawking. Okay, putting cases on everybody. Okay. Ross has not pled guilty and invoked his Fifth Amendment right to silence, cops said. Oh, he's so dumb. What a piece of trash. He was appointed to a public defender who did not respond to a request for comment on Tuesday night. A spokesperson for New York State Police told the Daily Beast that more charges against Ross are expected to be filed in the coming days. Damn right. Bury that mother lover. Bury him, right? Ross's criminal past is ultimately... What led to his arrest on Monday night, according to uh, New York Governor uh, Hochul. She revealed, uh, yeah, she, uh, she revealed in a press conference that the cops were able to hunt him down, largely because of a fingerprint that he left on a ransom note that matched a print logged in the state database stemming from his 1999 arrest for driving under the influence. Yeah, he's dumb. And thank God he's a dumb criminal. All right. That fingerprint also appears to have saved uh, the police from an embarrassing mishap because apparently they were allegedly looking at somebody else. They had somebody else that they were looking at. This is what I'm hearing through the grapevine. And thank God they got this fingerprint because they were like, well, no, we got to go this way. Because apparently they were looking at somebody else until this letter was dropped, dropped off. And I know some people are thinking that it it was a, 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 a like a mailbox, a, a, a mail truck or a mail mobile. I don't even know what's called. You know what I mean? A mailman's vehicle. I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> okay, but it actually, he pulled up in a ride. He pulled up in the truck, baby. He pulled up in a truck, which we learned yesterday, too, just so you know. He pulled up in a truck, y'all. <laughs> he pulled up. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to read it right here, but he's so dumb. <laughs> he's so dumb. Okay, so in the early morning of Monday... At 4.20 a.m., we, we heard in that press conference, the alleged monster was able to drive his truck to the home. <laughs> He's so dumb. And then he dropped off the note because <laughs> he thought that no one would notice. But then he also leaves a fingerprint on, <laughs> on the letter. Come on, man. He's dumb. Dumb. It's it's just he's so dumb. Okay? And then of course in that letter it demanded $50,000. Uh and they say it may have been penned by Senna, by Charlotte herself. That was inside this letter before he actually casually drove away in his truck. At 4.20 a.m. in the morning. I'm just sorry. Like, that's just dumb. Okay, guys? I'm sorry. Thank God he was dumb. Thank God he's the world's dumb, one of the world's dumbest criminals. Because without him doing that, she could be long gone right now. Real talk. So thank God he pulled up in his own truck. He didn't pull up in like a, you know, a, a, a random truck or a car that he stole so you can pull up and drop this, this thing off in the mailbox. None of that. He pulled up in his own ride, y'all. And then when he wrote this letter, it's interesting. Like, it's like they were, he was able to get away from having his fingerprints on anything on the letter except one little fingerprint. <laughs> what? So he almost got away with it. But that fingerprint, though, 
dude wasn't thinking, but hey, thank God he wasn't thinking. Dumb, okay? Dumb, all right? Uh, real quick, let me get some of these uh, Super Chats before they completely go away. First off, Martinique, welcome to the family. Thank you so much. Just like Martinique, hit that join button down below. Become a member. That would be greatly appreciated. Also, Porsche. Porsche, thank you so much for becoming a member. Wow. Hey, two in a row. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, like I said, just like Porsche and Martinique, please hit that join button down below. If you're watching on YouTube, consider becoming a member. Uh, Adventures Inward, thank you so much for the five. Chat, please be careful with your words. It's a three-ring circus in here. It's affecting our community kids. Uh, just be cautious with rumors, thanks. Uh, yes, everybody, careful. Careful over there. Uh, Savannah, thank you so much for being a member for the past three months. I really do appreciate it. Just got here, but thank you for everything you do. You're appreciated more than you know. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so, so very much. Thank you, Savannah. I really do appreciate that. Okay? Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys, for all the support. It really does mean a lot. But, again, world's dumbest criminal. I know that there were people saying that it was a... a a, a mailman's car, a mailman's vehicle. Uh, uh, I've no, it's not. It was his truck. He pulled up and he did this. But nonetheless, one of the things that is a bit strange, and a, a, we, we have to circle back at this, is that he was alleged of doing something really unthinkable to a family member who happens happens to be twelve years old. This happened a while back. But this was reported a month ago. He denies any of those things happening. And then next thing you know, those, that case was closed. And of course, they say in this article that, oh, hopefully they're, hopefully, let's not forget that oper operative word. Hopefully, they're going to open it back up, th that particular case. But what was it that made them close the case in the first place? Then you got to remember this past summer, not very long ago, he tried to take another kid, 10-year-old boy. And I guarantee you, and then of course, he's, he has a history of violence. He got into fisticuffs with somebody, put his hands on somebody. He was arrested for those things. It was looked at as a misdemeanor, but he has a history of violence. But like I said, I can't stop circling back, circling around the fact that there was reports of him doing something so unthinkable to a family member. And that case was closed. Polka dots, yeah, he should have been taken off the road, off the streets a long ash time ago. Long time ago, guys. Okay. So something's not right here. And it's frustrating. Again, very, very frustrating. But what matters, well, let's not forget. Number one, they got him, but he's not cooperating, he's not talking. He ain't saying a doggone thing right now. He is pleading the fifth, okay? One, two, three, fifth. He's pleading the fifth right now, and he's not going to squawk. To me, that could mean, I mean, to me, it leans on he knows something more, that there's something else involved here. There's something more here. But at the same time, I know that's me just, you know, with my the wheels spinning in my brain. To me, it says that he, it feels like he knows something's up, that there's some sort of connections to other things, and he's not willing to talk. But then at the same time, it could just be as straight up and down like six o'clock that he just, he just really needed the money. Because you got to remember, instead of him actually, because he didn't, they wrote the rant, the ransom letter was written, 
I demand $50,000 so you can get your daughter back, right? If there was something deeper going on, if there was a ring going on, if you get what I'm saying, he wouldn't need to write a letter, a ransom letter to anybody. He just would have waited for whoever to show up and move her on to the next, wherever she's going to be moved on to. And then he would get his money that way, right? So why would he write a letter if it's something deeper than that? These are the questions I'm posing to all y'all. Because it could be as simple as him being extremely desperate for money and just being dumb and trying a couple times to take somebody and it didn't work out until this camping trip, this situation with Charlotte. Which still didn't work out, obviously. So again, like I said, just questions, okay? Questions. But to me, I still feel like there's something more going on here. Because if it was him just trying to make a quick buck, which is so stupid, the way he did it, it's like so, it's so stupid. But if he was really that in dire straits for cash, I, I don't know. It's just, it just, I feel like there's something deeper here, but then at the same time, it could literally be, it could literally be as simple as, <laughs> it could be as complex as this being like multi-layered or as simple as this guy was desperate, <clears throat> desperate, and he's an absolute idiot. I don't know. It, it's it's very strange. But um, let me play some of this video with you for you guys as well. Like I said, I mean, just fire off in the in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, you know, do you think it's something deeper than this, or do you think that there's that it's just at face value? Just a dumb person doing something really, really dumb. But you know what I'm saying? I don't know. But then him found him found in his underwear. I mean, it's just, I don't know, man. It just, something just irks here. It's really irking my soul. I don't know. I don't know. But this is why we have these conversations as a family. Let's rock and roll. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Oh my, I mean, <laughs> we don't see those images. What we're showing you, that video, is the community, the family of Charlotte Cena, the nine-year-old girl who vanished over the weekend, was found alive. This after hours and hours, hundreds of people searching for her. News of her return hitting front pages of newspapers around the country this morning. One suspect has been arrested and charged with first-degree kidnapping. Police say there was a crucial piece of evidence that led to her discovery. And Nick is back to explain how police found this child after just 48 hours of searching. Adrian, how do we not give credit to the men and women of law enforcement who worked so quickly to reunite her with her family? It's the outcome everyone was praying for. The nine-year-old missing in New York has been found safe in a cabinet inside a backyard camper. But several questions remain about the man arraigned this morning and charged with kidnapping. This morning, the girl missing from a park near Albany is safe and the suspect in her abduction is in custody. New York Governor Kathy Hochul said Monday night during a press conference that investigators were able to identify a fingerprint from a ransom note allegedly left by the suspect she identified as Craig Nelson Ross Jr., age 47. Literally drove up to the family's mailbox, assuming they were not home. 4.20 in the morning, opens the mailbox, and inserts the ransom note, leaving a critical piece of evidence behind his own fingerprint. Governor Hochul said from the moment the ransom note was found, it took about 10 hours for authorities to identify a positive match from the fingerprint left on that note. SWAT teams converged on a home not far from the initial search area 
where the suspect was taken into custody. Now, they found the nine-year-old hidden in a cabinet. The governor said the fourth grader appeared, quote, outwardly, physically unharmed. Charlotte disappeared on a family camping trip at Moreau Lake State Park. That's about 50 miles north of New York City. Authorities say the girl was riding her bike with friends in a path that loops around approximately 30 campsites. The friends finished up, and they say Charlotte went around one more time alone, but she never returned. And we already know all this stuff, right, guys? We already know that story. Um, but it is great news, period, point blank, um, that this young woman, that this young girl was found safe and sound. Um, it is fantastic news, um, to be completely, completely honest. Um, I got another video for you guys I want to share, too. Hold on. And also, I, I do want to say this, too. All right. The I know that there was a YouTuber that went to was is in the area or was in the area. I don't know if they left already or not, but they were, uh, you know, of course, covering the situation over here um, in New York. They happened to get a chance to get a soundbite from one of the sons of Craig Ross Jr., he was not feeling it, the son. Uh, clearly was sitting there saying, hey, please leave us alone. Leave us alone. But he did say a soundbite, which is he doesn't really give a damn whether his father lives or dies. Now, I don't know if that means that there's been a... If there's been some serious uh, dissonance between... Craig Ross Jr. and his kids from the past, that this is like past drama, or if it's from the information that has recently dropped, because I don't know about you, I would be very candid as, as well about finding out what, if that was my dad, I'd feel some type of way too. And I'd want to be as distance myself as far away from that person as quickly as, as I could. Um, and yes, I can only imagine the amount of pain that those fam those family members are going through right now. And then also on top of that, you got press, you got media all up in their faces as well, trying to get a reaction. Um, I can only imagine what they're going through. But he was very, very candid and very, clearly very angry, saying, I don't give a damn if he lives or dies. You know, he said, if he dies, he dies. And, you know, that's pretty intense coming from the kid, from the kids. So either they have a tarnished past or this news just pushed them over the edge. Regardless, terrible, terrible news. And I don't blame the, the, the son feeling the, the way that he feels. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't blame him. Yeah, Cesar. Like Drago. If it does, it does. You know? So that's what he said. Um, and I can't play that clip. Uh, one, because it's... TMZ has it now? <laughs> so I can't even play that clip. Um, nor would I, unless I got the the okay from the, the, the person, the original uh, uh, content creator for it. Um, but at the same time, yeah, it is uh, crazy, crazy, um, that information that's been coming out here. Let me uh, uh, show you guys this, too, because <clears throat> we got some more we got some more details now to the dramatic. Now, the thing is, is uh, I'm going to have to be hopping in and out of this thing because this is Good Morning America and Good Morning America is a mother lover. OK, so I'm going to be using jumping in and out because of fair use and all that crap. All right. I know it's annoying, but it is what it is. There's some information in here, though, that I, I think uh, is very interesting and kind of creepy if you really think about it. All right. Let's take a look at this. This morning, nine-year-old Charlotte Senna, who was abducted on a family <clears throat> camping trip in upstate New York, now back home with her family as authorities reveal new details about the kidnapping and how she was rescued. She was very emotional. I can't imagine what was going through a nine-year-old's head as all this is going on. 
Police tracking down and charging 46-year-old Craig Ross Jr. with first-degree kidnapping. A ransom note left in the family's mailbox early Monday, the key to breaking the case. A fingerprint on it matched to Ross, who had been arrested for a DWI in 1999. Just dumb. He was in the area, the opportunity presented itself, and, and he took advantage of that. Investigators tracking down Ross and Charlotte in a camper on his mother's property in Boston Spa, New York, Monday. About 20 two miles away from where she was taken Saturday at Moreau Lake State Park. The fourth grader last seen riding her bike alone around a short loop on the campground. Now, really quick, I'm sorry for uh, interrupting this, but I did want to point this out. From where she was taken to where she ended up being found, 22 whole miles. But then where her family's home is, is less than two miles from the from the uh the, the 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 camper that she was found in so there's to me it's like it can't be that much of a coinky dink like it can't it can't be just a coincidence that he just happened to be 22 miles away from his camper by lupe where this young girl was riding her bike so conveniently for him to go over and just grab her oh it's a coincidence that she just happens to live in around the same neighborhood as me. Nah. Nah, I don't I don't I don't think so. I think she's been I think he was lurking. She was singled out. And he looked at the situation and he hopped on when he got the chance. Cuz there's details in here that is weird. Very weird. Let's continue. Lake State Park. The fourth grader last seen riding her bike alone around a short loop on the campgrounds. Yep. That bike found minutes later. Authorities telling ABC News it was upright on its kickstand. Y'all. Okay. So it was standing upright on its kickstand. Think about that for a second. Now, and now I, 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 I hate, I'm sorry for, for delving into this piece, but I'm going to delve into it. You got a kid who's riding the bike, right? And then you got the dude, if it is him, okay? The alleged monster coming out <clears throat> from the shrubbery, from the woods, and taking said child, right? He takes said child, and clearly she's 90 pounds, and if he's able-bodied and he doesn't really, and he's, maybe a, it's a good day for his MS, I don't know, okay? But nothing's flaring up, and he's able to go and grab her, right? She's 90 pounds. He's 275 pounds, and he's 6'4". He's a big dude. I'm assuming he has some strength in him. Grab said child. It starts to take off. One thing that I find weird is while he's running off, what does he do? He has enough time to turn around, run back, pick up the bike off the gr off the ground, and put the kickstand up. And okay, it's up. It's okay. It's good. And then run off. Like I said, doesn't make, it doesn't make sense. Unless, for some odd and strange reason, he somehow got her attention to get her to, to stop and get off the bike and walk towards him. Three, okay. Deb just said, not make sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. I agree. Let me just say this really quick. Three different options. Three. Three of them. One, he stopped her. She got off the bike, and he lured her in to his clutches. She, you know, 
She put the kickstand up, got off the bike, walked over to him, and then was taken. Option number one. Option number two. He takes her, runs back because of his strange OCD. I don't know. Picks the bike back up, puts the kickstand on, lets it, lets it stand there, runs back into his vehicle or whatever he's using, and and, 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 and gets away. Option number three, which that one doesn't make sense at all. Option number three. He snatches her. He runs, starts to run off, but there's somebody else there that grabs the bike, puts it back up, right? Puts the kickstand down and lets it lean, chilling in the cut. And they both go off into a truck Whatever vehicle, a, a two-person bike, it doesn't matter. And they kick rocks. Those are the three options you have there. Which one makes sense to you? Because, I mean, the first one makes me think like a scene from It, right? Literally. It, it's funny because he has red hair. But you know what I'm saying. And he's kind of, and he's bald too, and he's got red hair. But if you think about it, like a scene from It, she's riding her bike, and suddenly this weird ogre looking dude lures her in with what? I don't know. Something. But it's enough for her to calmly, easily get off the bike put the kickstand down and walk over to him. And then suddenly she's taken. Second one doesn't make any sense to me that he would run back, put like snatch her in a hurry, run back and put the bike back up, stand it up and go, okay, we're good. We're good. And run back into his car. Doesn't make sense. Third one makes more sense to me too. She snatched. Second person that's there. Puts the back bike back up, puts the kickstand down, and then they run. That's the that's the only other. See what I'm saying? So it's either option one or option three. But the question is, if he stood and worked alone in this situation, <clears throat> what was it that lured her in? What what was it that stopped her dead in her tracks? to go over and talk to the man for her to get off the bike. Like I said, it takes a lot to get off the bike and walk over, or at least get off the bike and stand on her own two feet, talking to the man. Like I said, I'm leaning more towards option three, but you never know. <clears throat> he may not have been, he may have worked on this alone. I don't know. But the fact that the bike was still standing up is weird. She was riding that bike, Bike, by the way, guys. She was riding that bike. She was supposed to go around, fully around the loop. This was not a situation where she was, you know, where the parents just turned around and she was just sitting there on her bike or something. And then she was snatched out of nowhere, right? She was riding that bike. Parents were like, go ahead, go one more time. One more time, but get yourself back here. Let's see how fast you can go, right? Some, some is weird. And Sonola, yes, yes. He has three kids of his own. He has offspring. He most definitely has offspring. So that is very strange. Let's continue. Like I said, it's just it, the kickstand part was like, mm, that tells me maybe, you know, it leans more towards on the more towards. Uh, uh, the the possibility of there being a second, maybe a third person there. I don't know. I don't know. SWAT teams descending on this rural property where they say they found Charlotte inside a small bedroom closet, the size of a cabinet, mm -hmm. wearing an adult sweatshirt. <laughs> Charlotte's family. Okay. Okay. I think that's another piece of important information right here that I wanted to share with you guys. She was not originally wearing, or at the end, she was not wearing the clothes that she originally was taken in. So the 
tie dye Pokemon shirt, the black, uh, the black Crocs, which apparently one of the Crocs allegedly was found near the the the, the bike, the black, uh, the dark black, uh, the dark blue sh- uh, pants that she was wearing. All those things were not on her. She was wearing an adult sweatshirt. Like I said, the the details and information now that we have. I feel how Banfield feels. Let me let me just say this again. When he was found, when he was found too, he was in his underwear. Do the math. I hate even saying that. That breaks my heart even saying that out loud. But if you really think about it, I hope that's not the case. But that is a little bit weird. That she's not wearing the clothes that she was wearing when she disappeared 48 hours before. That could mean something. That could mean nothing. But just pointing it out. Just pointing it out. What shirt? Charlotte's family overjoyed she's home. Her aunt telling WGNA radio minutes before they got news of the rescue, Charlotte's mom was hopeful. And she said, I just, I don't know, mother's intuition. I just feel like they're, she, she's coming home today. Police tell us they are trying to give the little girl and her family some space as they also try and piece together a timeline of her disappearance. As for the suspect, his next court appearance is scheduled for October 17th. Michael. All right. Thank you so much. We are happy that she is home. Yeah. I I mean, I agree. We are all happy that she is home, but now that we have like some of the information, we get a little bit of that information. It does make you think like this guy. I mean, I hope he's, I hope they bury him. I hope they bury him in that, in that prison. Real talk. I really do. Um, Because it is extremely, it hurts to think that anything could have happened to this young girl. And all she was doing was riding her bike, innocently riding her bike. And the other thing that really angers me is that there's been warning signs before. Now I'm not trying to say anything bad about um, the grandmother or, or the the family, the, the extended family that has spoken out about the alleged um, attack on the 12 year old. I'm not trying to throw any shame on any of that at all, but it does make you wonder when there were reports made and then those cases are closed for what reason? You know, it it makes me wonder about the Jesse McFadden, or at least it's, this screams to me, the Jesse McFadden situation. You had a monster living in plain sight, hiding in plain sight, out here doing unthinkable things behind closed doors. And maybe that's the reason why, I'm sorry for the left turn here, but maybe that's the reason why the son said, I don't care if he lives or dies. If he does, he dies. If that's the case, Maybe because of old allegations. Maybe there is some things that he did to his own kids too. We don't know. Right? Nor does that justify his actions. But that kind of information could be extremely helpful. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Got another one here for you guys. But yeah, it just it 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 angers me, it breaks my heart. But there is something that still hasn't been answered yet, which is what is the reason why this young girl, of all young of all the girls out here, why this young girl was taken in the first place? Why? It just doesn't make sense. Let's take a look at 
to Let's this. Let's go now to Jennifer Coffendaffer, News Nation's law and justice contributor and former FBI special agent. Um, what do you make um, of the fact that the so lit, it seems to be a very basic ransom note? Give me the money, or you'll never see your daughter again. Um, do you, do you take that kind of threat seriously from it, when it's written like that? Hi, Elizabeth. You know, I look at that and I, I say, was this something that was a spur of the moment thought after? In other words, was this always planned that he was going to hold her for a ransom and ask for money? Or was this an afterthought? I mean, two days had passed before this note was delivered. So it gives me pause as to whether this was an afterthought or whether this was planned from the very beginning. How often um, are we hearing about cases? I mean, <clears throat> first of all, his arrest record, we only see the DWI arrest. There had been early reports out that, you know, this might have been somebody who might have had a, a sexual uh, criminal past. It doesn't look to be that case. In this case, it really just seemed to be extortion to be the motivation behind this. I think there's more. <clears throat> right. That's what we're seeing with this note. Uh, but, but again, that delay does bother me. Uh, to hold a child for two days, basically, almost, uh, before giving a ransom note, and then in the note, not giving terms. In other words, if and by what date, and this is how you contact me, and this is how we're going to do it, and if you get mm. the FBI involved, you're in trouble. Normally, ransom notes have a lot of information, not just, I need the money, and you'll get your daughter. Let me, let me just in interject here. She's got a good point there. And of course, this is just speculation. This is just questions, okay? Or things to uh, let marinate in your own head. What are the chances of this? He goes and does this. Takes said child. Maybe he thought he had something lined up for her. You know, meaning that she was going to move on to someplace else. Maybe that connect fell through. So she, he had her for those two days. He started getting nervous. So he still wanted to make his money. So he writes, he makes her, allegedly, this is apparently what they say. It looks like she wrote this letter unless he has the handwriting of a, a small nine-year-old child. That's a possibility as well. But he had her write the letter asking for 50 grand. He goes and he's willing to risk it all by getting in his truck, driving there and hoping and praying for a moment when the cops will not be there. And his dumb ass pulls up to the, the mailbox and puts the letter in the mailbox. What are the chances of him actually having something lined up, think that he's going to make at least 100 grand for this connect but his plug doesn't come through. It falls through. So he freaks out, writes this letter, says, I need 50 grand. I'll give you your kid back. That's a possibility as well. But again, that's just speculation here, guys. There's nothing here that proves anything of that. But it is interesting, nonetheless, that he had her in his possession for that long, unless, again, the, going to just bare at bare bottom that this is just a disgusting monstrous individual that's just dumb and he just wanted to do this at his at his own time because he's a piece of mother loving trash and he just wanted to do it and SL yeah that's the other thing, too. Who in their right mind ever thinks that a ransom ever works out? And, and it's funny because in movies, it never works out in movies. I've never seen a movie where there's a ransom and everyone either gets what they need or everyone leaves the place alive. You feel me? So even in movies, it don't work out. It doesn't ever work out. So why, in like I said... He's dumb. He's clearly dumb. <laughs> He's just dumb.
but, but like he yeah yeah little little patty he he's special kind of stupid it's a special kind of stupid so you like i said think about those things think about those for a second did he think that he had a connect and it didn't work out and then he said damn i got to take matters in my own hands and i need this money let's write this ransom letter or he's just straight up dumb took this girl because he thought that he was going to be able to make a quick buck by asking for 50 grand, writing a ransom letter and take and, and, and doing that. And, and, and that's the thing. It's like, if you really think about it, you don't think five O is going to be right there trying to find you who's going to do the exchange. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like I'm trying to help him out. You know what I'm saying? It's like, bruh, bruh. I'm the tapping him on the shoulder. Like, bruh. Who who gonna do the exchange? So they gonna see your face. W what kind of car are you driving, baby? Because they're gonna see your license plate. They're gonna see what kind of make a car you drive, bro. The fuck? <laughs> stupid. All of it. Stupid. Let's continue. So it seems ill planned to me. Yeah, I'm curious. A lot of it seems ill planned. I'm curious. Um, in cases like this, and given your FBI expertise, how do law enforcement get information from Charlotte, from a nine-year-old? She's a little girl, but there's important information that she can tell them. Um, did they drive around for some time? Did he take her straight back to his trailer? Did he ever see his mother, who lived in the house that the trailer was behind? Damn good um, question. You know, did he feed her? Did he take care of her? How are they going about getting that information from a child that young? Well, I agree with you, Elizabeth. She is the key witness. And so that sort of interview is going to be so important. And they are going to have specialists, specialists there to help conduct that interview that normally work on child abduction and, and child cases involving children and involving minors. And they're very specialized in terms of how she's going to be questioned. And they're going to make sure she's in a very comfortable environment and do the best uh, that they can to make her comfortable and, and get rapport with her so she can provide all of the details she knows. Yeah, it's delicate work, but it's in this case vitally important. She's the one person who has all the information uh, that they need, including exactly. whether or not she'd ever spoken to or seen this man before. They did not live that point. far apart. Um, but ah. that big question of did he drive to the campsite looking for her? Or did he just happen to be there? We know the campsite was full. Still so many unanswered questions. Jennifer Coffin. Yeah, uh, that is a good point. Uh, by them asking her questions, she is the key right now. So by them asking her good questions, hopefully they can get closer to finding out some pieces of information. Because remember, if she did option one, which is she got off the bike put the kickstand down, leaned the, the bike on the kickstand, and walked over to him, could it be a possibility that they've had a conversation before and she recognized him and felt comfortable enough to go over and say hi? That could be it too. Or she, she do, he does have an 11-year-old daughter. Did they ever cross paths? And, he, and they crossed paths together, and she liked the daughter. She's only two years older. Then Charlotte, she's 11 years old, so it's, it's a good possibility. But they have not given out that information yet, and it still doesn't answer why he did what he did. And that's the sad part of it as well. It's very frustrating, guys. It is very, very frustrating. But you know, I mean, more information is going to come out. I mean, as much as we are sitting here going, you know, what does this all mean? Uh, we're going to get more information. Oh, trust and believe. We're going to get more information. Either he's going to talk or she's going to talk. I hope she does. You know, I hope she's not so traumatized to the point where it's, she's beyond, you know, she, she's beyond being able to speak about what happened. And I hope that the only thing that happened to her is her being taken. That's what I'm hoping.
so yeah, it, you know, it, it, it's easy for us to think about the worst. And I'm hoping that's not the case. I really, I really hope it's not a, not the case. Uh, let me get some super chats and some of these comments here too. Girl of the Valley, thank you so much for the five. With so many peeps there, someone would have seen him snatching her. Uh, would be a scene. Yep, I agree. I think he lured her like he almost did with the other kiddo. Yeah, but uh, you know, that's the thing I'm wondering because I feel like we... Aren't we all at, I don't know. I just, I feel like at some point the stranger danger is in, in, implanted in all of our kids' heads to a certain extent. So I'm wondering if there was some some sort of familiarity, familiarity with this man, with this monster. And that's how he was able to lure her, her right? Uh, uh, subdue, you know, hypnotize her in some sort of way. I don't know. Make her believe that he was trustworthy in some strange way. I don't know, but it's it's still something I'm I'm curious how that happened. Um, Oz, thank you so much for being a member for the past nine months. I really do appreciate it. Nine months is a long time. Real talk. Thank you. Uh, welcome home, Charlotte. Yes, I agree. I'm I'm very very happy she is home, safe and sound. But I do think that there is going to be. The main question is how this went down, how she was taken. Right now, from what we've heard in these articles, she or he has not spoken. He is not going to talk, allegedly. So the only other person that can give us some semblance of what went down is Charlotte herself. And I'm hoping, I, I will say this too, I'm hoping that these, the the I'm hoping that I'm hoping that the parents are speaking with her in a in a way so that she understands that no matter what she says, she's not in trouble. No matter what she knows or what has happened, she's not fearful of speaking out because she's scared of getting in trouble. Because I know that that's a nine-year-old kid. So I know that there's going to be a lot in her head going I don't want to get in trouble with dad or, you know, mom and dad are going to be mad at me that, you know, that, that I even, that this even happened type thing. And I'm scared to talk about these things. I'm hoping that the parents are encouraging her and standing by her in solidarity and giving her strength during this very, very difficult time. That's what's, that's the most important part. And I hope that that gives her the opportunity and the strength to give the details that law enforcement needs because there could be other kids out here that may be involved in this situation um, or have been taken by this man. Maybe she saw some details, something in that, in that place. Maybe she saw some things we don't know. Right. Um, but by her speaking out, hopefully it gets us, gets law enforcement closer to getting justice. Cesar, thank you so much. Buenos noches, Senor Pascal. Hey, buenos noches. Cabron, buenos noches. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you so much for the 10. Appreciate that so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, And wait, wait, wait. Here's another. Girl of the Valley, thank you so much for the five. Did I already say this one? I thought I already did. Hold on. Did I already say that one? Uh, okay, with so many, uh, thank you so much for the five. With so many people, peeps there, someone, uh, someone would have seen him snatching her. Would have been a scene. I think he lured her, like he almost did with the other. I feel like I just said that, but it just popped up again. But thank you. Um, but yes, I I agree. I think. Like I feel like some other people were. There. I just don't understand how it was still the sun was still out. It was still light out, and she was taken like that and no one saw it i just find that a bit weird y'all i find that a bit weird um but again more information is going to come out as soon as as soon as people start talking and uh if it's not going to be him unfortunately it's going to have to be her so we'll see what happens in time and she needs time 
I'm sure she's going to need a little time to process everything because that is a, I can only imagine. I mean, as an adult going through that kind of trauma, but as a nine-year-old, that's a lot to process. That's a lot to process as a nine, as a nine-year-old. But anyway, guys, that is the show. I appreciate all y'all for being here. It really does mean a lot. Thank you so, so very much. Appreciate y'all. Okay. Y'all could have watched anything else, but you decided to watch this with me. Spend some time with me. So I do appreciate that. Thank you so, so very much. Um, Before you head out, okay, be sure to hit that like button down below. If you're watching on Facebook, hit that reaction button. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you crush that subscribe button. Hit that join button down below if you want to support the channel even further. That'd be greatly appreciated. Okay, and for those of y'all who are watching on Facebook, don't forget to crush that follow button as well. That'd be greatly appreciated. You know your boy's working hard out here in these streets, so support if you can by hitting that follow all right and as more information comes out we will be talking about it trust and believe we will be talking about it so be on the lookout for it all right there's a lot of stories going on i got another story that i want to give to you guys it's a crazy one and it's still not solved it's another missing person situation and we still don't have answers for this one yet at all it's crazy So we will be talking about it, and it's brand new. Well, it's not brand new, but it's brand new for people out here in these streets. None of y'all know about this story. None of y'all know about this story. I guarantee you, okay? So we're going to be talking about that for shell, for shell. So don't forget, hit that notification bell. Make sure it's set to all so that you know whenever I upload, whenever I go live, because you know it's random. So I appreciate that. Anyway, guys, much love to you guys. And you know what? My, My thoughts and prayers go out. And healing power go to this little kid. Real talk. She needs it more than anyone right now. And I think we all need to just keep sending that type of vibration right over to Charlotte so that she can find time and moments to heal. And moments to cherish her time with her family. All right? Anyway, guys, it's time to get going. Much love to you guys. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. And I'll see you guys very soon. This is the Pascal Show. Bye.